The only thing that separates people in this world is money and titles. That's it. Why do I need letters after my name and things like that? I'm dyslexic. I've got enough letters in my name as it is at the moment. It's England's oldest inhabited castle. Witness to a thousand years of bloody wars, revolting peasants, and blue blooded aristocrats. The two queens. Today, it's a top wedding and events venue. Hello, how are you? In an age where the customer is always right. I think it's terrible. I don't know, I really do. You need the right staff. Things do go wrong, and, and frankly, so what? Yet when those working downstairs... What people don't realise, we work our balls off for minimum wage. ..are no longer willing to be lorded over by those upstairs. Who needs who the most? You apparently know best. Carry on, you're sacked. And can they hold it together for the all-important summer season? I'm terribly upset. <laughs> We're all English together, aren't we? I know we are. Welcome to Bickley Castle. Robbie and Sarah Hay bought Bickley Castle for just under £2 million 12 years ago. Come on, you lot. One Wednesday evening, I was sitting in my chanting little Queen Anne house on the river in Richmond, and the page opened on Bickley Castle. Built in the 11th century, it's set in 60 acres of Devonshire countryside. That is our field all the way around here all up to the hedge, up to Bickley Mill, and back down here, and fishing rights here on the river. Now open to the public for weddings and hotel guests, Sarah and Robbie rely on a core team. Sorry, Scott. Not now, Sarah, I'm a bit busy. Two of the longest serving members are Sarah's cousin, John, well, I'm off on the lovely job of clearing up any poo. And groundskeeper, barman, and all-round handyman, Richard. No one got up at any of the stairs in the cottages. Well, he's got me cleaning them all. You're really using your head, Richard. I know. I'm it. impressed. Yeah. I... What happened to you? I woke Seriously. Up in a funny mood this morning. It's just... I'm always in a funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. See you later. Yeah. <laughs> For hundreds of years, Bickley hosted the cream of English high society. But times have changed. Hi, guys. You're here. Yes. Yeah. Don't sit down to it. It's just... Today, the castle gates are open to anyone who can pay the bills, with weddings starting at around £12,000. How are you feeling? Yeah, a bit, yeah. A bit, a bit nervous. nervous. Yeah, nine Electrician Nathan and fiancé Kasha are here to tie the knot. <laughs> you have those little, like, Cinderella moments as, like, a five-year-old, but, yeah, never did I think I'd be here getting married in a castle. Oh, bloody neck. Shifting hundreds of chairs and tables around the castle is just one of Richard's many jobs in the run-up to a wedding. Definitely this has got to be swept here. You can't possibly have people coming off a courtyard onto a mat like this. Sorry, Rich. I think we need to do this red carpet first, do you mind? No, I can't do it now. Come on, Sarah. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> I've got one pair of hands, so let me finish this first and I'll come and do it after. All right, OK. All right? You finish that let and then... finish that and, then I'll, come and then I'll come and do that and then I can have a cup of tea. Yeah, you're allowed a cup of tea. Thanks. <laughs> For the night before their wedding ceremony, Kasha and Nathan have arranged an alfresco supper for their family and friends. I've got chicken burger, chicken nuggets. To stay competitive, Bickley allows outside catering, whatever the cuisine. Oh, this is a pretty poor show, isn't it? I regard this castle as unique, and I think it slightly brings the tone down to have fish and chip van. I'm sorry, I just do. 
if they want it, that's fine. I don't mind what they do, as long as they're happy. Are you a bit snobby at heart? It's <laughs> pretty obvious, isn't it? I don't know. Snobby, I don't know if that's the right word. You've got to admit that class does exist in this country. However much you would try and pretend it doesn't, it does exist. Sarah may be upper crust, but it's her husband, Robbie, the cousin of an earl, who is the true blue blood. He's been running country estates all his life. Yeah, it's not blocked up here anyway, so... The bridal party are getting ready for the nuptials, when there's a nasty surprise. <gasps> That's sewage. Yeah, what have we got here? Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, the septic tank has overflowed. We're onto it straight away. Don't you worry. We're straight onto it. OK. It's a backup of some kind. I'd better go and find out. Okay. I just want to come and apologise for what's just happened. Oh, that's one of those no. actors. <laughs> it can happen any time, can't it? So it's fine. The chances are it's a child's undisposable nappy or something. It's just going down here. <laughs> That's lovely. Absolutely lovely. How are you feeling? Good. Now you look after her. I it's will. Not just one day. <laughs> The next morning, groundsman Richard has forgotten one of his many jobs. Richard should really clear the cigarette butts. Ah, la la. OK. Rich? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry, I know you're having your lunch break, but the, can you possibly this afternoon do all the cigarette, cigarette butts everywhere? Well, why don't you ask for some of the girls? Well, I'm because grass, Sarah. they're on the middle of the rooms. Yeah, but I'm cutting grass, so I'm trying okay. to get all the place tidy. I think well, they're, they're stretched as well. OK, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. No, it's OK, I'll get somebody else. No problem. OK. Right. Yep. Lovely. It's incredible. He's forgotten who's the boss. Come on, pussycat. Let's go. There is no issue, it's just that I personally would say, don't worry, I'll do it the minute I finish this. Yes, but Richard or doesn't. He Richard says, I'm not doing this now. Yeah, yeah. because that's the way he's he brought up. I'm not a yes man. Never will be a yes man, never going to be a yes man. Why, why would I be like that? If something's not right, why am I going to just say yes and do it? At its peak ten years ago, Bickley hosted around 30 weddings a year. But this year, they're down by more than half. Genuine, it has never been this tough. We are preserving a 900-year-old castle. It's about a quarter of a million a year to run this place. Well, the main concern is whether the bank's happy. <laughs> and if you've got a heating bill of 32,000 a year, you're not exactly sort of wondering where your next thousand pounds comes from. It's, it's a matter of where the next hundred thousand pounds comes from. To bring home the bacon, Robbie and Sarah have had to diversify. Everyone has a sausage. Three years ago, they opened the castle to B&B &B guests. Rooms start at 60 quid a night. I, I, I quite enjoy doing the breakfast, really. Although he'd never run a B&B &B before, Sarah's cousin John takes care of this side of the business. When uh, Robbie and Sarah started out about 14 years ago, there were about three wedding venues in this area, and now there's something like 22. There you go, Jana. Have to take those over. <laughs> That's it. Get a coffee. Breakfast is served. Good. Why do we need a fresh one? We've just cooked them all. But some guests have complained that their table hasn't been cleared and cleaned. I don't understand. 
Hello. So we came in when you asked we came in, the breakfast was put there for us with all the right. dirty stuff on there. I don't understand why that would be done. If you re cook that food, that would be lovely. Don't yeah. don't give us that potted up, throw it in the bin. I don't quite understand why it happened, actually, but anyway. I mean, you need to know how to run these places to make them profitable, don't right? I'm not a very happy bunny. We've had a good time here. Yeah. We'd just like the breakfast sorted out properly. While John recooks the breakfasts, Robbie wants to know what all the fuss is about. Hello, sir, I'm Martin. Nice to meet you. Well, oh, we only waiting for breakfast, no issues. Well, I don't want to have a table chair. No, we didn't. No, there's all dirt on the table. I mean, other people have been eating here. Was that how it works? Did, does the, fre did the fresh people get a, a clean table? No, the table is clean. It's all polished. There's nothing wrong with it. Well, there's a bit of debris. Should have been cleaned, but well, she's cleaned it now. That's in fact a historic building. I'm sorry if we can't pass muster. If you don't want to be here, don't be here. Well, this is not about historic. This is about reality, isn't it? I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, like you know, somebody's just eaten there. Well, why yes. should, well, well, could we not go first and someone come after us? Would they accept that? We should be wait outside. Well, it's very nice. Let me explain what happened. Oh, don't be sarcastic with me, please. I mean, let me explain what happened. She's taken some of the dirty dishes. You, you're not sort of, you don't want to hear the story, do you? I mean... Well, anybody can nitpick if you want. I'm not nitpicking. You're not nitpicking. Let me it's just explain, sir. Sarah, okay. what is going on? I don't know. Your, your husband's Stop. rather upset with me now. He thinks I'm nitpicking. Well, I'm well we've nitpicking. never had anybody complain here. Yeah, I promise you, we're lovely you gentle complain, people running complain, a beautiful castle. Well, no, that's the right. We're all English together, aren't we? Well, no, we are. Come on. I'm a local Conservative councillor in my area. I'm the correct person, like you're a correct oh, yeah. person. Right. Anyway, I'm sorting all that out. We're sorting it out. If you yeah. go John's outside... Also, John's a nice man, he'll tell you. We're all right terribly now. nice people. Well, why lovely. don't you just okay. sit, sit down, down and let's start again? Okay. Start a white sheet of paper let's and let's start again. Okay? I'm sorry, you've been bothered. Now, sit this in, that's fine. What the hell's going on? <laughs> I think it's terrible. I do, Pam. I really do. Lovely. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Do you want my tomatoes and mushrooms? In a minute, I'll just... Uh... <laughs> There's nothing new about customers moaning, but in the 21st century, a bad online review can be very bad for business. Bickley's unofficial complaint handler is John. You get things on TripAdvisor from time to time, and, and to be honest, most, most of our reviews I, I think um, they're very good. John, John, 99% of them yeah. are superb. Oh. Just a one odd one. If you don't mind me saying, when somebody comes into a beautiful dining room yeah. and says, oh, is this where we're going to have breakfast then? Yes, I thought it was quite unnecessary. Do you know what, John? These people were, were just out to, to get to us. We've had 378 reviews on here. That's only 3% that are one-star reviews. And then we suddenly get a two-star one here. Got yeah. to look at the bad ones with real scepticism. They're not telling the truth. They don't understand the business. Don't even mention TripAdvisor. <laughs> John and some of the, the management, they, they're, they're, they're really nice people, but you can see they're not used to running a business. But they've been doing this 12 years. They've seen everything that can go wrong, and still 12 years on, they're making the same mistakes. They should have learned by now, either deal with it, or it turns into a bigger problem. The crucial summer season is in full swing. The next wedding is just a few days away. Which means the grounds need to be spick and span. John? Sorry, but I thought this git, Richard, had done the courtyard of the cat poo, and he hasn't. What, what's, she, what's she complaining about? I don't really know what the problem is, actually. I am just going to go mental, all right? All the benches need to be moved forward. No, I've all done right. All, I've done all that. Just done all that. And Sarah, I'll go very, very annoyed. Say that. Can I just say something? The cat poo was his problem and the dogs was yours. No, I'm not listening. Cigarette butts everywhere. Richard, hi. Did you did you clear all the cat poo here yeah. this morning? Yeah. 
and all the cigarettes, because there's still some left. Well, I haven't done that yet. Oh, OK. Can you do it later? If I've got time, yeah. Yeah, please. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. It's Sarah and Robbie's 12th summer at the castle. For Sarah, life before Bickley was a world away. I ran a property lettings company in Chelsea, top end of the market. I've actually worked quite hard to get here. I haven't just inherited it. Sarah met husband Robbie 23 years ago. It was love at first sight. But it wasn't her first marriage. I was 20 years old when I met her first husband. So I was very, very young. And I was married to a womanizer. I don't know what else to say. He just kept womanizing and, and eventually the marriage collapsed. Obviously, I've changed a lot over that experience. There's no question about it. I don't get too close to people anymore because I don't trust people. Why do you think I've got the go that I've got? Why? Because I'd never want to go to that place I was left in when he left me. That's not a place I would ever want to go back to. It's June at Bickley Castle. Marie, you won't believe it. They've arrived. Holly! Hi! Look at you, old glampers! <laughs> This weekend, it's the turn of hairdresser Holly and her fiancé Matthew to get hitched. Have you been up to the wedding breakfast room yet? No. no. Go on, then. Under the umbrella. What do you think, Holly? It's amazing. It looks so good. It's fantastic, yeah, yeah. You know nothing about this wedding. Besides what time to turn up and <laughs> don't, get, don't get drunk. Way. How about this for you? Have you seen this? Well, the whole thing's been raked. Oh, cool. Oh, lovely. All done for you. I think the groom there hadn't a clue that we'd raked the courtyard. He had no idea and doesn't even know what we're doing. He's an electrician. He was more interested in having a beer than what we'd done. Can I have some more of this, please? <laughs> With preparations over, it's time for a hundred family and friends to witness Holly and Matthew say, I do, at their 30 grand wedding. Goodness me, isn't this exciting? It's almost last orders for the evening reception. When one of the guests has a slip up. <laughs> Where's it been? In the moat? Oh. Is that a bit of a swim in the moat? She did go wash in the moat! Oh, Steve, so funny! <laughs> This morning, there's some cleaning up to do. Completely pissed, completely drunk. Fell in the moat. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Honestly, I don't believe it. How can somebody take their clothes off on a brand new Axminster carpet? Why didn't he go into the bathroom? What a nana. Not the worst I've seen. There's no point making a fuss over it. You just clear it. Guy could have gone into the shower, though, couldn't he? Yeah, but then, again, he could have <laughs> fell into the river and died. True. Good, isn't it? There's some over here, too. Round here, Rich. So he's obviously gone round the back there as well. Yeah. You're a star. Well done, that look looks really good. All right. Yep. 
Tying the knot at Bickley costs an average of 15 grand. Bickley Castle. But Sarah's hoping one day that will feel like small change. Big dream is to get very expensive weddings in, some top, top end of the market weddings. To raise the castle's profile and attract a more upmarket clientele, she's planning a lavish end of season charity ball. This is going to be absolutely glitz, high class. I mean, this is the big event. Sarah's hoping a few aristocratic VIPs can help get bums on seats. Lady Colin Campbell, does that mean anything to you? I saw it ask it a few days ago. Hello, Georgie? Hi, how are you? Well, it was lovely to see you the other day. Oh, thank you, my dear. It's always a pleasure to see you and Robbie. Ah, well, we are planning a ball here at Bickley Castle on the 22nd of September, and we would really love you to come. Darling, say no more. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. okay, big kiss. Okay, well, Bye. Bye. <laughs> Great lady. Visitors to Bickley don't just get to enjoy the castle. There's a 6th century chapel, a tennis court, four thatched cottages, and next to the car park, behind a privet hedge, a caravan. Home to Richard. I will give you the tour of my castle. Would you like to come through? This is not going to take long, believe you me. Bathroom. Cat room. Clothes room. You're in the kitchen. And this is the front room. And my bedroom. I mean, as you can see, we have a little dog under there called Frankie. Look at her. This is the garden. Two gay guinea pigs. Awesome. I have seven cats and I'm not allowed any more. Richard moved here after finding himself out of work and with nowhere to live. I kind of stayed on a friend's sofa for, I think it was four weeks before I was offered this job. Most people have to give their arms and legs to live in places like this. All right, I have the owners here because I live where I work. It's the reason all the fences built because they just walk in and knock on my door and I could be sat there in my pants all naked. With bookings down this year, it's not just Sarah and Robbie who are feeling the pressure. These are the most important months of the year for us. I used to be running around like a blue ass fly because it's Friday, setting up a wedding, but I'm not. If we all lose our jobs, I lose my home as well. To help pay the castle's towering bills, Bickley hosts a number of smaller events. <laughs> this afternoon, Sarah's cousin John is on duty for Iva and Maureen Kitchener's 60th wedding anniversary celebrations. Oh, it's about pins and all the other soft drinks Right, there. yes, OK. The couple's daughter, Demi, is far from happy. Ah, oh, well, I know we're having a little crisis because all our guests have arrived and the welcome drinks aren't out, so we were supposed to have had soft drinks and pims ready for people. Pims? It's supposed to be pims. So, <laughs> everyone's sweltering hot, having done a long journey, so we're really hoping that rect gets rectified pronto. Um, I'm struggling a bit here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry your drinks aren't here, but they will be shortly, I am assured. I'm really struggling a bit at the moment. We've got one anyway. Well, that's fine. We'll get that going. Right, let's, uh, let's get that. Let's get a jug. Have we got a big jug? Have we got a jug, any jugs at all? The... I'll go and get you some of my, my jugs. Mate. OK, thanks. I didn't expect everyone to arrive at 12. Yeah, but you've got to be ready if they turn I know, up. I know, I know, I know. There we go, look. That's another one you Thank owe you us. very much. I certainly owe you one, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. Pim, anyone? Because they've got the welcome drink, because it's our mistake, we've had to give the alcohol away. And it makes you so frustrated that these simple little things are not being done. Pims? This can go around the internet like wildfire, whereas 20 years before it never did. And I, they really don't get that. It's a society where people are very demanding, everything's got to be perfect. The 
the end of the day, you've got to look at the big picture. That's not reality. You know, things do go wrong. And, and frankly, so what? It's the crucial summer season at Bickley. Tonight, Robbie and Sarah are welcoming the great and the good from across Devon for an 85 quid a head banquet. My goodness me. Look at everybody looking very, very smart. <laughs> Bring your glasses upstairs, all right? How thrilling. <laughs> Guests are enjoying a three-course Elizabethan-themed meal in the castle's great hall. Robbie, take the, the mango sauce and dip it in. Serving drinks is Richard. I'm in a cupboard behind a curtain, and they're in the great hall eating a feast, drinking champagne, whilst I drink Coke. And not even nice Coke is flat. Two queens. I just wanted to say, if anybody wants to buy any wine tonight, we have Richard here who will get you some wine. Some people might say that you've just got a bit of a chip on your shoulder. Why would they say I've got a chip on my shoulder? I don't care who you are, how much money you've got, we still come into the world the same and we go out the same. Robbie, your smoking jacket. Has it been handed down in the family? Yeah, it's your best. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I love it. The banquet goes without a hitch. But this morning, there's a problem. Excuse me, I just want to quickly drive up the food this time. John asked Richard to shift some chairs, who refused. He told me I had to do the chairs over there. He did tell me last week, but I forgot. And he just started getting a bit of attitude, so I told him to fuck off. I'm not putting up with this, Sarah. No. I've got enough to do without being sworn at by this bloody ragamuffin. Let him go and calm down. Yeah, I think he's better. Yeah. I think I'd better right. with that. <laughs> he's, a, he's a wild card. He's obviously he's never been disciplined as a child. We all get the hump at work, don't we? Doesn't matter what job you do. I bet Richard Branson gets pissed off of what he does. That what the people don't realise, we're on minimum wage. We work our balls off for minimum wage, and then we get the, we get the owners slagging us off. Of course, we have our ups and downs, but we are all privileged to be in this beautiful place, so let's all enjoy it. Richard's grandmother was originally from Malta, though he himself was born and raised in Somerset. We grew up with nothing, really. Do you know what I mean? Mum and Dad worked really hard for what we had. They made sure we all had clothes and food on the table and stuff. I went into a, a children's home when I was, I was 15, 16. Very aggressive and very angry as a boy. Very jealous of people around me who I went to school with and friends that they have more than us. So I stole a lot when I was a kid. Do you know what I mean? To try and have something. But that's all dealt with. It was dealt with a long time ago. When I say that Sarah and Robbie piss me off and they annoy me and that, that's because I live here and they're like family. We're always going to argue. We're always going to have different views, definitely. But Richard may have gone too far this time. If I lost this and, and lost my job as well, I'd, I'd, it'd devastate me. It's not just me I've got to worry about. It's all the animals. And, yeah, I do worry about that. That's interesting. And there's a new review. And they called it a worn-out cottage. Well, is that is that a very sensible thing to put, really? A worn-out cottage. What does that mean? 
I don't know what that means. Not enough room to open our suitcases. Well, that, that is actually strictly not true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. The owners were a little creepy. So, you know... Oh, welcome to my castle. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. Well, it's not quite the idea, is it? Do you think it was Sarah? No, oh, undoubtedly. I'm just thinking about how I respond to I cannot help but be amused by the comment that the owners were a little creepy. Our intention is to be friendly and welcoming rather than enacting a, a Hitchcock scene. One feels a little bit protective towards her, if anything, because I know Sarah and I know that her heart is totally in it. And really, all she wants to do is to make sure that people have a good time. It's the last wedding of the summer season. Do you have loads of champagne for me? Um, yeah, there's quite a bit. Tomorrow, Jamie... Hi. Hiya, how are you doing? ..and his bride-to-be, Santi, will be swapping rings. I'm your barman. <laughs> OK, well, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. It's finally getting married. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was touch and go with me. They tried everything. <laughs> as the couple settle into their room, Sarah is keen to welcome them to her castle. Hello. Santi? Hi. I just thought I'd say hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Can I come in just to say yeah. hi? Or is that the wrong moment? Yeah, um, maybe no. later, if later. that's okay. <laughs> I thought we'd have a drink about quarter past six. Oh, we have to head to Exeter. Okay, guys. The next morning, there's an unpleasant surprise in store for Sarah. What's up now? Santi does not want you to be in evidence at her wedding. That's fine. I won't I'm be. Just, I'm just telling you, I have that's to fine. tell you because she said it to me. Fine. That's absolutely that's fine. Right. Apparently, she doesn't want me here uh, for the wedding, so... I don't know what I'm supposed to have done, but anyway, don't worry. She's a good person, but she, oh my God, she's so exhausting. And I just like being around her. That's the thing that, that is the only thing that stresses me out. Some people have told me I'm a bit pushy. But I am a nice person. So if I get criticized, it really hurts. Right, here's Sarah. So I don't want Sarah around. Where's Sarah? She's up, gone over that side. So tell her to keep away. If the bride sees her. Yeah. If the bride sees her, she'll have a seizure. <laughs> I'm itching a lift to another venue. Tell you what, I'm not required anymore. I'll go and find another place to work. <laughs> Thanks, lots of love, bye. As the curtain comes down on the summer wedding season for another year, Sarah turns her attentions to the grand finale the upcoming charity ball. So if I send you two invitations, that would be fantastic. Yeah. For the bash to be a success, everything has to be pitch perfect. Shall we start then? Let's start, OK? Are they having wine on the table, John? Um, Just a minute. I'm yeah. a little bit concerned about this. About what? Well, you've got 60 people here, yeah, and that's Richard's going to be serving the bar. And he should have been here. Deary me. Mm. 
Richard, you are a speaker. <coughs> I don't really care, Sarah. I've got a lot to do, so I'm not coming to the meeting. I know, so sweetheart, but listen. Down. Write it down what I need to do, and I will go and do it. That's all you have to do, Sarah. That's all why don't we do. meet? Sarah, I am too busy at the moment to do it. Right. OK, what I why need don't to we do. say 6 o'clock? You go Because I'm not going to be here at 6. I'm not coming over at work. It'll have to be done tomorrow. Just tell me how many chairs you want up there. That's all you've got to do. I don't need to come and sit in these meetings, Sarah. you just got to write down what I... He's all right, so he's doing... Fucking Pointless bloody meetings again, innit? Do you know what I mean? They're, they're so stupid, they can't just write things on a fucking piece of paper and give it to and go, can you do that, please? They've got to sit and talk bollocks to you for bloody hours over the same shit all the time, and it pisses me off. Is this yours? Do you know what I mean? They have time to sit on their asses in meetings because they do fuck all else all day. It's in my tits. What I want to do is to sit down in with him for five minutes to go over exactly what he's got to do when, and he's refusing to see me because he's busy. Rich, hi. Can I just talk five minutes? No, I haven't got time for a five-minute meeting. Write it down and give it to me and go, Rich, can you do that, please? And I will do it. It wouldn't have cost you anything to have come out for five minutes out of here, would it? Sarah, I'm We need busy. to know. We've had a business. We've had a meeting. Sarah, and you're... Well, you may not be doing nothing all cool day, because you can see I'm fucking doing loads. Richard, you don't think I'm doing anything? Sarah, why would you be here? You wouldn't be employed if I didn't do it. You're annoying anything. me now, Sarah. Yeah, well, I'm you're getting on my nerves too, Richard. Sorry. I'll see you now. <laughs> Richard! If you push Richard, you, you just go off the job. And then we're really stumped. If you want me to set up tomorrow, go and write it down. Just tell me what you got me to do and I will do it. Okay, That's all you all have right. to do. Okay, I've accepted I don't need that. These meetings, I know you've Sarah. got it. Okay, you've got a t shirt on, but earlier on, unfortunately, the guy came along and said, Why has your guy got no t shirt no, on? He didn't. You he just, did. Oh, whatever, Sarah. You always do that and it's always a load of bollocks. Whatever, whatever. Pointless. Write it down. Send it by post. I don't give a shit how I get it. Just give it to me. On a bit of paper, Rich, set this up. Thank you very much. Done. Anyway, I'm going back to work. All right, Come in, darling. We've had an explosion from Richard. What's the matter with the guy? Well, I think you're going to have to do something about it. If you don't mind me saying, he is just rude. So really what I'd like you to do, if you don't mind, is to talk to him. No, I'd like him to survive to the end of the season and then we'll think about it. Thank you. OK? But just ask him to be polite to me. Do you mind? Not at all. I did go over the top, of, yeah, quite a bit. I think when I have arguments with anyone here, it get me down, but more Sarah Robbie, because you don't know if they're in a really shitty mood and they decide, right, bollocks, I don't want him here no more. I want to sack me. I'm homeless. I can remember a time when I was... <laughs> I wanted a pay rise, so I, uh... I told him they didn't give me a pay rise, I'll leave, and he went, well, leave then. So I left. Sat in here for two weeks and had to go and ask for my job back. So I had nowhere to go. I had no job to go to. I had no money to go and get a place. And so it got me by the balls because I can't afford to leave. And not only that, with the amount of animals I've got, places just don't want to take you. I'm surprised I haven't been sacked. But if they want to sack me, that's down to them. But I could, you know what I mean? I wouldn't go quietly. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> Robbie's hoping a quiet word with Richard will clear the air. We can't afford to have people who aren't nice, and we can't afford to have people who are troublesome. Good morning, Richard. Um, all I would say is that you got out of control a bit, yeah. Yeah, well, you had a bit of a ding-dong. 
Yeah, OK. Uh, an apology wouldn't go amiss, just to say if, if you misunderstood the situation. Why have I got to go and apologise to her? I don't understand. Well, she is the one getting the business in. Yeah, but your staff are worried about losing their jobs for next year. All of us are. And I live here, so I'm worried about losing my home. Well, when... that probably makes people a little bit more testy. What makes testy is when people are not telling the truth. Do you know what? There's all the wedding venues around here, right, that our staff go and, go and work at, yes. right? Yes, yes. And they're fully booked, and they have been all year. But don't believe everything you hear. And that is exactly what we do, too. Yeah, but we're not fully booked, though, are we? No, nor are they. Well, they are, Robbie. They aren't. You apparently oh, know best. You. you know best. Well, no, if that's what you know... Of course I don't. ..you want to run us down in public, carry on. You're sacked. All of it, his reaction is to throw it back at me as if I'm guilty of not, not marketing the place properly. He's not qualified to tell anybody anything. Quite literally, I run the question, it does cross my mind whether or not, well, you know what I mean, he's a Maltese emigrant, basically. Temperament isn't as calm as yours and mine. I think you know what I mean. I don't mean it unkindly. Did you mean it when you sacked him? I didn't put this at this instance, but I thought I'd fire a shot at him because he can't go on being rude. <laughs> That's just life, isn't it? Let's be honest, I'm not the only one that has shit at work. But, yeah, maybe I've just got bigger balls than some people. I wouldn't say bigger balls, maybe I'm a lot more stupid than some people because I can't hold my tongue. And that's probably one of my faults, is that I can't just... I can't just take it and walk away, digest it, come back, and that I have to just... I've got to let it out there and then, otherwise it just... If I bottle it up, it just winds me up and then you get really upset, really angry, and then you end up doing fucking stupid things. With the clock ticking down to the big end-of-season charity ball, Sarah decides she needs to tackle Richard over his behaviour. I've absolutely had it, to be honest. He can't talk to me like this. It's just a nightmare. <sighs> if you don't mind me saying, you're quite a strong personality, Richard. Oh, very you know, strong. <laughs> and I say, what, I say what I think, yeah. and I always have done, because I don't... I can't be doing with people shy. But we don't need to have these blow-ups. Yeah, but I, do you know what? To be honest, sir, I think we do. And I'll tell you why, because... I'm not very keen on I don't, I'm not going to come over and just start arguments for an argument's sake, but... But why, why do you do it, Richard? I mean, Because I... we all have moments, Sarah, all of us, including yes, you, Robbie, me. Yes, everybody has moments. I but know my that. my point is, right, we're going to have our bust-ups, we get over it, we put them to bed and we move on. That's what family do. You've got to understand, I live here with you and I have done for over five years. Yep. So you are considered as my family. I love you, Robbie, John, and I do, but I'm still going to argue with you. He describes you as part of his family. He said he loved you. I know, it's absolutely... Uh, it's, it's enchanting, but I had never sort of realised that. I warned him on that. Of course I have. Whenever we've had problems, he's been there, fun enough. He's quite a loyal guy, from that point of view. But erratic. <laughs> After eight weddings and almost four months of hard graft, tonight's charity ball marks the climax of the summer season. For Sarah and Robbie, the ball is also part of their grand design to put Bickley on the map and attract a higher class of customer. Look lovely, sit up, you look lovely. Hello, how are you? You sometimes think there's an easy way to earn a living. Thank you so much. But I'm one of these people who will not be defeated. <laughs> I want to look to semi-retire in Spain. Open up a little ice cream parlour, cos I like ice cream. It's that simple. Wow. Fantastic. They've, they've all saying it's just fa fabulous. I'm 
Really pretty chuffed. I don't think it could have done much better than what we're doing. The ball is a big success. Whether it leads to more business for Sarah and Robbie next year remains to be seen. I do worry about them. They're not spring chickens. All that worry and stress is not good for you. It's in my blood now. I love this place. I'm passionate about it. It's a challenge every day, and only when you've taken it on do you realise the magnitude of the task. I've got my job, I've got my place, and the animals don't want any more than that. You and Richard stuck with each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're stuck together at the moment.